Hey, my name is Tashira. I'm 25 years old, and this is my multiple sclerosis journey. Hey, y'all. So, I am back with another video, but this time it'll basically be a Q&A featuring three other people, friends and family, and they will talk about their experiences of dealing with me having multiple sclerosis. I chose to do a Q&A um, because I'm the one that has multiple sclerosis. I've never thought about or noticed or considered how my family and friends have to deal with me. <laughs> I, never, I never really thought about how me having MS impacted other people that know me. So I'm going to ask some questions and based on their knowledge or their experiences with me, they will give their answer. Um, thank y'all for doing this. You didn't have to, but I really appreciate it because for y'all to be super honest and genuine, it was really, really, really nice. So thank you. Before you knew I had multiple sclerosis, did you know what it was? I can honestly say I didn't know what it was. Um, I'd heard of it, but I didn't know exactly what it meant or how it impacted the body at all. No, I was unaware of what it was until you started explaining the symptoms that you go through and the treatments and appointments you had to make. I did, in fact, know what it was because another one of my friends, her mother had it. So it kind of let me know what it was and it let me see what it did to the body. But I did not know that it can affect everyone differently. How did you know I had a problem? Uh, I noticed you had a problem when you would mention that you were having knee pain or you always wear your knee brace. I told y'all about the whole knee brace thing and it's an excuse, and I just don't like explaining. And you didn't really want to try to walk anywhere long distance or be standing too long. But you didn't really play sports, so kind of didn't know where those injuries came from. I knew that you had a problem when one day I came into the classroom at the daycare that we were working at, and you were crying and I kept asking you to show what's wrong to show what's wrong and you would never tell me what's wrong you were like I'm okay I'm fine and then I was like okay and then I asked you again and that's when you finally broke down and told me you had MS at first you would not tell me you just told me that you had a car accident and you had broke your ankle okay so she's right I was diagnosed in 2015 I had a car accident in 2016 and I broke my ankle. So every time my legs would hurt or I was going through pain dealing with MS, I would blame it on the car accident. And that was my excuse every time because I didn't want to talk about it. Nobody knew or I, did, I wasn't ready to tell people that I had multiple sclerosis. It was easier because people don't ask questions when they say, oh, okay, a car accident. But if I say, oh, I have MS, they're like, oh, really? and that it was pain from the ankle being broken and trying to heal but then you finally opened up to me after you got more comfortable around me and realized i guess that i was really trying to be there for you and be supportive and be a genuine person and not try to like bring you down because you had ms i didn't know factually until you actually told me a few things and about you know all that was going on what i did know is that um things weren't right and the things that had happened prior that you were saying you know was the issue um like your knee was bothering you your leg you jumped out of the tree and it was just a simple you know one two wrong step and um you know that's all it was i knew that was no longer the fact that was no longer the case um i just didn't know what all was going on i knew we need to find out some more quickly have you seen how ms affects me yes I have. Um, there was a time when uh, you were going to your apartment, your roomies were with you and they had to help you up the steps and then you had that long, long staircase. Man, I forgot about that. I forgot, yeah. But I was in school going through everything before I was diagnosed. I did live on the second floor. 
um, I say the emotional was more when you were dealing with incontinence. Um, I knew that was an emotional and like mental wear down because first of all, you know, you're at the age you're at, you're like thinking I'm beyond any issues like this, any challenges like this, or I'm too young to have anything like this. So what's going on? You know, on top of the pain you experience with your leg and adjusting to all that, now you have to deal with the frustration of, you know, kind of relying on somebody else. Um, if you're with somebody else, case in point. You and your dad were traveling to uh, Baton Rouge and, um, you know, just the idea of constantly needing to stop and use the restroom and, you know, not want to inconvenience anybody else, certainly not want to hear anybody else, knowing you weren't going to hear too much. You want to play all that. But ultimately, just dealing with the inconvenience. It irritated you. You didn't want it to irritate anyone else. You just didn't want to deal with it. And that, you know, that was more of the, I guess, mental, emotional part of it. Frustrating nonetheless, to say the very least. You. Yes. I've seen it firsthand, and I know that it can make you really, really upset, really angry. Um, it can have a bunch of different emotions on you. Sometimes you're really happy. Um, like, once you get your treatment and you feel better, other times when the treatment process and every, like, I guess the medicine starting to wear off, you get really upset and groggy and I've seen like you start limping and it just, it really makes me sad actually when I see that you're in pain and there's nothing that I can do about it. Name a time where you saw firsthand how MS affects me. Uh, first hand experience would be uh, that party where we were at the nightclub and it got extremely hot and you started noticing like some people taking off their shirt, other people like grabbing a whole bunch of paper towels to wipe off, but then there was you that just stopped walking and it looked like you were having muscle spasms and when anybody asked you were just like, oh, I'm okay, I just need a minute, but it was really the heat bothering your muscles, but you didn't want to tell anybody. We were actually about to leave work and you were walking back inside and I was walking out to meet you and you just started limping and holding on to like cars and everything and I was like, Shower, are you okay? And then you had tears streaming down your face and right then I knew you weren't okay and I was like, do you need me to carry you? And as soon as you got in the building, you basically just fell down and the administrators at the time ran and got you cold bags of peas and put them over your legs because that was like the only thing that would just help the MS at the time and I followed you home to make sure you made it home because I knew you weren't supposed to be driving with your legs like that but there was no other way and it was raining on top of that that day and I was just like oh my gosh she has to get home and yeah, that was a crazy experience, but you made it home safe and sound. One of the things that I know that you really enjoyed doing a lot was um, dancing. You love to get into your music and get your dance on. And you know, although I didn't see you like attempt it too much, but I know that you didn't dance as frequently as you used to. Hell, you even danced at my wedding. The biggest thing was like the uh, inconvenience, irritation, you know was a constant having to go to the bathroom and a sense of urgency with it and then so frequently I know that that annoyance and uh, I definitely saw that you know impact you but just the full motion of movement the lack thereof um, you know not being able to have the same range of motion you know what I mean when you're walking and people don't realize when you're constantly on the go and your person is about action doing a lot it's a lot harder you know what I mean to make these adjustments a lot more irritating as well but yeah what advice do you have for those who support their loved ones with MS? Um, for all of those who support, um, my advice is to continue. Um, don't treat don't treat anyone with MS like they're disabled and they can't do anything. Allow them to make that call for themselves, um, and just be there to help. If they ask for help, do it, but don't just assume they need help because they have MS. I would say, be patient with them but don't treat them like they're any different from you. Because I feel like once you started treating someone differently because of something that they have, then they don't really feel like they fit in anymore. So you need to always make sure that you make them feel comfortable, but not comfortable to where 
they just feel like they can't be there for themselves anymore. Let them feel like they can open up around you and express if something's hurting or let them try to do things themselves. But just because a person has MS doesn't mean that they're fully disabled. They can still function like a regular person. So treat them like a regular person, unless it's to the point where they can't. They want to be treated just like everyone else. Um, be honest, ask questions, listen. Um, I'm one that likes to do as much as I can to absorb the pain of those that I love and care about. And so, um, this obviously is not something I could do in this scenario. Um, but it's not about me and what I want. It's about me being there and supporting you in every way that I can. And so with that, um, I need to learn how to listen when you're not talking. Listen to you know what your body is, is not just telling you, but telling us and things to look out for. When you're in pain and you're not saying you're in pain, but your face may reflect or you may sit in a certain position and you know i know you get tired of talking about how you hurt or how something is inconvenienced or annoying you know um so listening is extremely important and of course listening is active hearing so you must take action when you learn these things you apply them knowledge is power if you're about truly supporting that person then you do whatever it takes to make sure that they have what they need and a lot of times we have no clue what that is what encouraging words do you have for anyone with ms um, my encouraging words to those who have MS or may get MS in the future would be to just come out with it, tell the people you're close to so you're not battling it alone because it's going to be a long process and fortunate enough, there's a lot of research and people out there that can help you, but you have to open the door for them to help. Baby. Keep trying, keep pushing, keep living another day. All you can do is be you, and you can be your best you. You don't need anyone else to tell you that. You don't need constant um, accolades and things like that. That's gonna, it's not necessarily what's gonna get you up in the morning, you know. Knowing what you're dealing with and not feeling like dealing with that yet another damn day, and you still get up and do it anyway, live. Do what you do. You are some of the strongest people walking this planet. Um, I encourage you to stay strong and stay positive. And even when you're angry and you're mad and you're hurt and you're upset and sad, let that anger be your motivation to keep doing it again. Because life is full of surprises and changes and there's a lot of times nothing we can do about it. But we live another day. We fight another day because we deserve so many more things than what we have now. And we will. This is not something that's going to be stopping you, your life. It may hinder a few things, it may change the way you get things done, but you will not stop. You won't quit. And you will fight another day. Keep going. Keep on keeping on. That's one of the quotes that one of my um, history teachers always said. Keep on keeping on. Don't let MS discourage you. Don't let it stop you from reaching your goals. Do what you need to do and prove people wrong. Prove people that just because you have MS doesn't mean that you have to stop living your life. Live your life to the fullest and just persevere. So, to hear my family and friends talk about how they see me going through this MS journey, it was it was really refreshing because I don't get to see how others see me. I don't I don't understand how others see me. Nobody says anything. I mean, I hear I oftentimes I hear I'm proud of you, you got this, but I've never really understood what they go through. I'm just more so concerned with what I go through, and I've never actually thought about my family and friends and what they have to sacrifice in order to help me. So, I needed this. Which is why in the previous video, I talked about having support and how important it is to have support if you have MS. Um, I also talked about uh, if you're a person that knows someone with MS, how you can be supportive 
and hopefully the advice that they gave in this video will help those who don't know how to be supportive. I hope y'all like this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to support your loved ones that have MS. We need you. We can't do this by ourselves.